I strongly believe we are just a handful of months away from the Spurs putting together a super team for Victor Wimbenyama after this year is done. And as crazy as it sounds, there's a good chance Victor could be competing for a championship next season. Let me explain how. Let's just get straight to the point. Wimby isn't an ordinary rookie. He's an all-star talent already. And honestly, I strongly believe he's a top 10 center. If I had to name centers who were 100% better today than him, it would be Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, DeMontis Sabonis, Rudy Gobert, Bam Adebayo, Kristaps Porzingis, and Alperen Shingun. Other than those guys, I'm taking Wimby over any other center in the game, no question. Due to his crazy talents, it seems as if the Spurs are tempted to steer away from the normal, let's be trash for like five years and hopefully be an elite team by building through the draft. They recognize that their time is now. Most young and bad teams have to develop their top draft picks into stars, which could take three to four years at the least. However, like we just mentioned, they already have their star, so they can start the process really early. It makes even more sense when you consider the fact that they'll have another top pick in this year's draft as well. Maybe we're witnessing the start of a dynasty and we don't even know it. Victor is one piece. This upcoming draft pick could be another, and an off-season signee could be the third piece. And we're gonna reveal who they should go after later in this video. But a lot of fans don't understand how dynasties are built, and that's because nothing is organic anymore in this era. Dynasties nowadays come from stars just jumping ship and teaming up on a new squad every other year. Because of that, sometimes we can forget just how beautiful it is when a super team or just a championship level team is built from the ground up. No shortcuts. And what better example to use than the team we're talking about? The year was 1997, and the Spurs, led by the dominant big man David Robinson, were in dire need of rejuvenation after a disappointing season. Fate intervened in the form of the NBA Draft Lottery, where the basketball gods smiled upon San Antonio, granting them the first overall pick. With that pick, the Spurs selected Tim Duncan, a prodigious talent out of Wake Forest University, heralded as a franchise-altering presence. Duncan's arrival in San Antonio ignited a spark of hope among fans and teammates alike. His relaxed demeanor and unassuming nature beliled a fierce competitive spirit and an insatiable desire for greatness. Paired with the Admiral's veteran leadership, Duncan wasted no time in making his mark, earning Rookie of the Year honors and leading the Spurs to a dramatic turnaround. As Duncan's star brightened, the Spurs continued to improve their roster, seeking complementary pieces to surround their upcoming superstar. In 2001, they struck gold once again, selecting Tony Parker, a lightning-fast point guard from France, with the 28th overall pick in the NBA draft. Parker's emergence injected a new dimension into the Spurs' offense. His quick silver drives to the basket and super elite court vision earned him widespread acclaim. But it was in the summer of 2002 that the final piece of the puzzle fell into place. The Spurs, always keen on scouting international talent, took a chance on an unheralded Argentine shooting guard named Manu Ginobili. Despite going relatively unnoticed in the draft, Ginobili possessed a flair and creativity that immediately caught the eye of Spurs head coach Greg Popovich. Together, Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili formed a trio unlike any other in the NBA. A perfect synthesis of skill, selflessness, and pure determination, dubbed the Big Three. The first taste of glory came in 2003, when the Spurs defeated the New Jersey Nets in the NBA Finals to capture their second championship in franchise history. Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili were the architects of San Antonio's triumph, their collective brilliance shining brightest on basketball's grandest stage. But their journey was far from over. Over the ensuing years, the Spurs continued to dominate the NBA, bringing home three more championships in 2005, 2007, and 2014. Duncan's masterful post play, Parker's wizardry with the ball, and Ginobili's fearless shot making became what many thought was the blueprint to a dynasty, which at the time, it was. You see, the Spurs struck gold in the draft. And who's to say they won't do the same this year? One prospect who was born to be a spur is Nikola Topic. Watch one of our most recent draft videos to see a further analysis on his game. But this kid has a lot of potential and perfectly fits what this team needs. He's a six foot seven point guard with incredible court vision and a pretty good ability to get downhill. I strongly believe he could be amazing for this team. One of the many things that's holding the Spurs back in the win column is their point guard situation. 
situation or lack thereof. Topic could come in and add a whole new flair to the Spurs offense and give Wimby more touches, which will increase the wins. How many wins? Not sure. It all depends on how well Topic plays. And the thing is, nobody's asking him to come in and be a top five point guard. All he has to do is average around six to eight assists and build great on and off the court chemistry with Wimby. He doesn't need to put up 20 points per game, nor be Steph Curry from three. However, in today's era, bringing in top free agents to construct elite rosters is the new way of the game. And while just last season that would have been bad news for the Spurs, drafting Wimby and seeing how borderline elite he has been has put the entire league on notice. I mean, seriously, every elite player in the NBA has come out and talked about how incredible Wimby is on the floor. From Kyrie, Paul George, Draymond, LeBron, KD, you name it, they all acknowledge him as being that dude not just a rookie. And that's why it isn't crazy to think that some of the best free agents wouldn't want to sign here this summer. Free agents like LeBron, Paul George, and James Harden are going to be available. But of course, let's be real. While they are still elite players, they are leaning more towards the end of their careers than the beginning, especially LeBron. But that's not the end of it, because during the 2025 season next year, there are a few players the Spurs should keep their eyes on. One player being Lowry Markkinen. At 26 years old, there is no doubt in my mind he would wouldn't be a nice fit next to Wimby. Lowry could play the four and he could be the five or vice versa. Despite what some may think, big lineups work. Just look at the defending champions. Nikola Jokic, MPJ, and Aaron Gordon are a big forward and center front court. And it helps on both ends of the floor. Also, the Cavaliers this season have one of the best defenses in the league when Mobley and Jared Allen are on the floor. And of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves have Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns in their front court. Lowry's averaging 20 points for the Utah Jazz while shooting an insane 40% from three. Having two giants who can score like wings will be too much for defenses to handle. Because if Lowry or Wimby get the ball down low, you have to double or over help a bit. But when you add in the fact that Markkinen is a terrific off-ball cutter and Wimby has shown flashes of being a good passer, you can just imagine how well this offense could flow, especially if they draft Nikola Topic, who will run the point. Now, who would the Spurs have to give up? Not sure, but keep Jeremy Sohan at all costs. Sohan is an extremely versatile defender. Players like him simply don't grow on trees. Finding a six foot nine defender who can defend three to four positions will be crucial for this team to contain the best teams and scores in big games. Tell me what you guys think about a Markkinen and Wimby pairing. But for whatever reason, if that trade didn't happen, I would go after Donovan Mitchell. If the Cavs get upset again early in the postseason, I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted out or the Cavs moved on for him to retool their team. Mitchell had a lot of success with Rudy Gobert in Utah and has worked well with Allen and Mobley with the Cavs, so it's clear his big men benefit from him and vice versa. He's quietly having an MVP level season, putting up 27 points per game, and the hope would be that there would be a domino effect once Mitchell is in San Antonio. Because, I mean, who wouldn't want to play with him and Wimby? And it doesn't even have to be more superstars, it could simply be high quality role players. Josh Giddy is someone I think they should take a look at as well, especially if Nikola Topic doesn't pan out to be who they thought. And this all is if they even select him. They very well could pick someone else, but he hands down makes the most sense. I know Rob Dillingham is a bucket, but you already have Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell putting up good scoring numbers, and that's barely moving the needle for this team's success. So they need a facilitator to run the offense and set things up, and Topic can do that. With the rise of Jalen Williams and Kaysen Wallace, that has made Giddy more expendable. He and Wimby would be amazing together in the pick and roll. It's just a thought. Victor Wimbenyama has been a monster, putting up 20, 10, and 3 while leading the NBA in blocks. He's also an 80% free throw shooter, which is very good for any player, let alone a 7'4 center. He's proven he's already at least a top 45 player in the league. So there's really no point in making no moves this offseason or by next year's trade deadline and being bad for another season. Plus, there aren't any more generational prospects coming up in these next few drafts. So that's another reason to go all out on building a playoff roster whether it's with Lowry Markkinen, Donovan Mitchell, Josh Giddy, or someone they're able to snag, like Trey Young next season. It could be the start of something special. It all depends on the direction the Spurs want to take. But what do you think about all this? Should the Spurs skip the rebuilding process and try and bring in a star to pair with them? Or should they just continue to be bad and build through the draft? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.